Hey everyone, it's NBZ, and today is a very, very special day. It's a particular day that has meaning for me, and uh, maybe has meaning for some of you as well. But May the 4th, 2007, was the day that I received my copy of Pokemon Diamond, which means that it has now been 10 whole years since I started playing this game. Uh, my dad, he was over in America at the time, and the game wasn't slated to come out in Europe, the UK, until later. I think it came out in June here or something. Um, and he bought copies uh, of this game for myself and my two friends, Ali T and Bali. You know, probably both of them by different names, Cortez. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was uh, Bali was the Wind Waker at some point, and then he was Jack White the Fifth. Lots of different variations of names. But this date is why I know, because my Empoleon is obviously my Piplop, the first Pokemon I ever chose in Pokemon Diamond. And the day I met it is May 4th, 2007, which is now proudly displayed on this screen. So that's what happened. Uh, and I decided that I was going to show you some battles. Now, I'm relatively busy right now because I've got exams and things happening, so I, I'm going to give you one battle today, and then I will show you some more uh, in a couple of weeks' time once everything is sorted and I don't have to work all the goddamn time. Uh, but uh, we're going to kick things off with one against Sanji the Idiot, um, someone who <laughs> has been following me for a very long time and uh, who created an account back in the day when I made up this character of Sunji, and uh, it was very cool. Um, and this is one of the last battles I ever had. Uh, this entire series of battles is going to be uh, the end of Wi-Fi, which was about three years ago, when I organized some battles with some of my friends and some people from back in the day. Seven of those battles I think I already uploaded to the channel, and I held back about six or seven uh, for now. So here's the first one. I hope you enjoy, and let's say farewell to the greatest game of all time, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. If there is one thing I miss from 4th gen the most, it's auto level 100. I mean, come on, it's the most convenient thing ever. I didn't have to waste my time leveling everyone up. It was fantastic. I wish that they would bring that back one day so it'd be convenient for people, but alas, uh, that's what happens. So this is the Sandstorm team. I decided to bring it because, you know, I needed a challenge. I needed to go hard. So I went with a serious team and we'll see how it goes. It goes badly to begin with because he leads with an Infernape. Mrs. T, not a fan of Infernape. So uh, switch out to Nubs straight up. Got to go for it. Got to happen. Um, and Stealth Rocks come out, which is fine because I have a Fortress. But the problem is it's my physical wall and coming in against Infernape is not going to be great because the fire moves and the threat of all that. So I want to keep it safe in my back pocket for later. Nubs, however, can kind of take this thing on as long as it isn't too powerful and it seems like it is the sash lead which means that i can basically go to town look how fucking much or little should i say that fire blast does absolutely goddamn pathetic and fat you suck you suck so much oh my god the toxic the sandstorm this team is just built for degradation you know taking them down taking knocking those buildings talking about knocking knocking off the focus sash just to confirm that it is there and i've not even hit this infernape once and this hp is almost basically a quarter gone almost half gone jesus this is what happens when you're in a sandstorm and toxic so nub's doing a straight up fantastic job I, I think he probably has close combat but it's not really worth him going for it um and so he's just kind of staying in i don't know what he was doing just kind of hanging around so i try to encore but uh, eventually goes out to the venusaur which is the smarter move uh, he can potentially toxic me if he wants which i'm fine with because it means i can't be put to sleep and i can rest myself up but he goes with a smarter move with sleep powder kind of incapacitates me somewhat and i'm a little bit threatened because the stealth rocks are up so you know shuckle is not going to be sticking around too long unless i get rid of those so i need to be wary got to keep that in the back of my mind i'm kind of a sitting duck but to be honest venusaur doesn't pose much of a threat uh it can't really do much to me you know it probably has energy ball or something so i'm fine just sitting here and doing nothing until he pops out the leech seed and i'm like ah okay well, that could be annoying. Uh, he could bring something else in to take advantage of me because I'm just sitting here asleep. But thankfully, um, sleep turns do burn in 4th gen. So I am able to just burn these sleep turns off and I can pop nubs back out. I can pop them back in and just burn some more sleep turns when I need to. Really a crossroads here because I think there's going to be a potential of him bringing something in to try and set up on me. And that's exactly what he does. Goes to Dragonite, which is dangerous. So I make the proactive switch into a heat round. This thing is scarfed. This thing is dangerous. And I, with all my power have hp ice so i'm so happy i'm going for the hp ice going to take this dragonite down and it's great and it, it's not hp ice and we said this is a it's called pikachu it's called pikachu for a reason it has hp electric it's it's for gyarados it was dumb and i didn't do the right thing so 
well, I get screwed because it's the wrong hidden power and I get destroyed by an earthquake. But at least I know that he's not scarfed. Uh, it seems like um, he doesn't have any like leftovers going on. So I'm still wondering what his item is. But he kills me with an earthquake, which any Heatran's going to die to a Dragonite earthquake, but whatever. Uh, bring in Dickheads. Got to go for the Stone Edge. I have the band. I have the power. And he has a Dust Noir, which is a pretty solid physical walls, kind of defensive monster that can come in, stop me in my tracks if it wants to. And I see that it has Earthquake as I bring in Nubs to kind of be the, the barrier here. Now, the reason I don't go into Fortress is because I'm wary of the Will-O-Wisp. Uh, and if Fortress can get a good Gyro Ball or Earthquake off at some point, that would be best. Also, I think I can take anything from this guy and I can just burn sleep turns. And what I really want to do is just wake up and rest. Because if I can wake up and rest, then I'm in a better place. Uh, I can come back in later and maybe take advantage. Um, and maybe once Stealth Rocks are gone, have a better time. But he goes straight into Dragonite again being really offensive here um, and it's dangerous so I got to get out of here I don't know what I want to go for um, but uh, I don't get out of here apparently I'm not, I'm not scared enough I do wake up though and I encore him into earthquake but it's I'm in a bad position right because if fortress comes out and isn't able to rapid spin then what the hell am I going to do nubs is dead nubs is dead unless I get Forian. so I could have gone there for the rest but I don't because the earthquake would have killed me and I've encored him into it so I'm going into him now now I can pop the rapid spin which is going to save me a lot of time a lot of stress and uh, going to put me in a good footing. That Earthquake still does a significant amount. I'm starting to think he might have a choice band going on there. Not 100% sure, but he is, uh, you know, locked into it because of my Encore, so I couldn't really tell to be honest. So he goes into Infernip. I actually set up my rocks instead of spinning first, which was probably... It's, it's a hard choice, right? Because on my end, I'm suffering with the Stealth Rock, and I kind of need Nubs to be alive for certain situations, but that Dragonite is also running rampant on my team, so Stealth Rock is going to be invaluable. So I had to get up at some point, I throw it out there, and here I take a risk. I just stay in because... I can't go to anything else defensive against this Inferno, but it's just not going to work out. And it turns out he misses the Fire Blast, so Nutcase on the case, gets out his detective notebook, starts fucking jotting down. Fire Blast, 85 accuracy, in my pocket. Bang, bang, shaboom, I'm in it. Um, an ape just not wanting to go out without getting the Stealth Rock possible up and at him, goes for it again, but doesn't realize at this point that the Sandstorm plus Toxic has built, and he's going down, down, down in that earlier round. He would not like to uh, to die, but it has to happen. Um, so Nutcase, really uh, on the edge here, doing some great work. Back up to 252 HP, 252, the magic number. Everyone knows. Get those EVs popping. Uh, Nutcase, love and life. Um, so in comes Starmie, and this is another potentially dangerous situation because Starmie, of course, can rapid spin. So what am I thinking? I'm thinking, okay, I can't go into Shuckle because Surf's going to murder me. I've got to get him in at some point safely so I can, you know, rest up and be fine. I know Nutcase is useful, especially for stopping that Dragonite, but I would really like to make sure that Stealth Rock are on the field. So in case he rapid spins and I have that issue, I stay into Stealth Rock. Turns out he goes for HP Fire, which is no problem, kills me, but what I can do is trap him the fuck in here. Dickhead's coming in with Arena Trap, uh, able to suck a punch. I'm guaranteed he's going to attack me. I'm pretty sure he is uh, choiced in some way. So uh, absolutely lovely stuff going on there, just cleaning him out, choice banded destroyed no more starmy no more situation we're good dickheads got control of the field he knows what's up he's just poking his head out i've always found it funny how doug trio you can only see one of the noses and it's this weird spot of red in the center i don't know it's always just kind of made me look at it somewhat different you can kind of it, it's it's not really the best portrayal of what Doug Tree actually looks like, but in any case, in comes Venusaur, and this is the moment I come in with Shuckle, uh, and you may be thinking, why would you do that? You can get killed by any move. This is Shuckle, my friends. An energy ball takes me from 45 down to 21. Uh, I heal basically most of that back with my lefties anyway, uh, and at this point, as long as he misses the sleep powder, which can happen from time to time, and it does in this case, I'm going to rest up. So I, I agree that the hacks is kind of mounting in my favor a little bit. I did fuck up. It was my fault that the Heatran HP ice wasn't the HP ice. Um, but, you know, if I'd known that, then I probably wouldn't be in this scenario. But in any case, I'm back and rested. There's no Stealth Rock on the field, and his Stealth Rocker is gone. So I'm home free, and I have rocks up. Plus, I've gotten rid of Starmie, so the potential of him spinning, pretty minimalized. So we're in a really good place. This Dragonite is on a timer. It's a ticking time bomb because Sandstorm in three turns is going to take it out. Here's the problem though. Um, I need to get Fori 
I don't have Forry, is what I'm saying. I don't have Forry, so I can't get anyone in to take a hit. I need to see what he's going to lock himself in. Two turns out, it's going to be Outrage. And at this point, I'm looking at my team. I'm like, God, I have Titar, but I would like Titar to be at full health because I can sub up and do some great stuff later. So I just let the Outrage hit me. I get hit a bunch of times, get taken, and Sandstorm is railing him down. He's not quite dead yet, but this is a golden opportunity which could turn out poorly because I don't plan. He still has Dust Noir, right? So me setting up at this point is kind of silly because with Lucario, if I try and Swords Dance and get my way boosted, then he has a Shadow Sneak potential, but I don't think about this situation. I'm like, I'm the king of the fucking world. I'm going to get my... This is perfect because this is just beautiful to me. Outrage is so powerful, but not powerful enough to kill Lucario. I get a free Swords Dance in. He knocks me down to the Salak and then dies himself to the Sandstorm. What does that mean? I'm a plus two, plus one. I'm about to wreck some fools if only I could, Dust Noir doesn't get affected by extreme speed. So that's that's the end of that chapter for Lucario. I waste my Salak Berry because Shadow Sneak's going to take me out. And it's a golden opportunity for him to do it, which actually works out in my favor because I get a free switch into Tyranitar. Tyranitar versus Dust Noir is a great scenario. I can sub on his Willow. I can potentially take a hit of the Earthquake. But I'm kind of worried that the Earthquake is going to do more than 101 HP. So I don't want to waste any health uh, trying to sub up on him, which is why I just straight up go for the Dark Pulse. There's also the Pain Split threat, which if I subbed, I think I could have avoided that. I'm not sure. I can't remember how Pain Split and sub works, but that was my mind's eye telling me. In any case, I take him out. Would have been nice to be behind a sub against this T-Tar, because then I could focus punch, but who cares? Motherfucker, UFP, go for that unprotected focus punch, and it doesn't work out, because he just earthquakes me and shatters my focus, so I don't get off the unprotected focus punch. Really? Real shame, unfortunately. Um, but I can kind of counter him back if I need to. Um, the problem is, do I go into Shuckle as a sacrificial lamb and then bring in Lucario to kill him? There's a lot of questions flying up in the air here. Um, and it turns out that I go for the Dark Balls. Uh, I guess I was predicting the switch, uh, and it turns out okay, because in comes Venusaur, uh, can't take, I mean, it probably would get hurt by the focus punch, but it's fine to kind of take it here, and here is the point at which I know I'm going to get put to sleep somehow, because I saw the lefties and Venusaur goes before me, so it is faster, um, he energy balls, uh, which is fine, because the sandstorm boost to my special defense, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, but then comes the spec defense boot, uh, drop, so that's a potential problem, I couldn't see how much damage he did with the energy ball, if it was over 101, then it doesn't really matter at this point but he's going to be able to break my sub regardless get the sub up and energy ball's going to break it but uh just go for a dark pulse to try and incite some damage yeah at this point i was thinking i don't know i mean this battle was taking place three years ago so i can't exactly recall my thought process right it's kind of difficult at that point in time um but uh titar seems to be on his last legs and i'm thinking okay this titar could be useful later I might need it against his own T-Tar for some reason. So I think I switch into Dugtrio at this point. Maybe just throw it out there as like, okay, Dugtrio, you can die, it's fine. N now, when I'm thinking about it, Dugtrio is actually the key to me winning this game. Um, and I potentially think I'd go out into Dugtrio here because I thought he would go into T-Tar so I could catch him on the switch. But that was maybe a bit too dangerous, right? Like if I had just sacrificed T-Tar, then brought in Dugtrio, boom, boom, I can kill Venusaur, I can kill T-Tar, Earthquake all day. But again, the gods of hacks just fall in my favor and the sleep powder ends up missing. So inevitably, I'm able to kill the Venusaur because he can't switch out and he's at low enough health um and now we just need to take down a couple more threats i believe he's got oh no he only has one he only has t-tar left uh which means that i should be able to take it if if this works um but that is a toss-up again because t-tar has decent enough defense even with choice band and earthquake i don't know if it's gonna clinch it especially if he's invested defensively uh and it doesn't it turns out it turns out he is physically broad enough bulky enough one might say to, to tank the hit to take it and he just slides on with that last little inch left uh i still have obviously my lucario and this is where we finish and seal the deal with a reversal that's right salak sword dance reversal and a crit to rub it in oh delicious um that was a fun game i enjoyed it i uh, agree the hacks in his favor uh, or in my favor sorry on his end uh, maybe a little bit unpalatable but for a final performance for the sandstorm team because i'm not sure if i actually used this team against any of my other last battles um i was pretty proud of those guys they uh, they pulled it out and i think i made some dumb decisions like looking back on that battle now um even though it's been so long since i've played pokemon i'm kind of looking at myself like well, I wanna, why didn't i switch the t-tar in there why don't i do the dog trio here but um hey it was a fun game i i had a great time and uh 
uh, yeah, that is going to be the first battle of this farewell series. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I hope you will all join me in celebrating the end of Diamond Pearl, the 10-year anniversary, the decade of the most important video game uh, in my entire life. Uh, so leave a like, all the, all the comments, all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.